wizards, Hajra here. Christmas is just around the corner and I wanted to share a nice ornament demo. Something that captured the beauty and magic of holiday decorations for me, so I thought of all my favorites and put them in a watercolor ornament painting. I used Sennelier French watercolors from my Aqua Mini set, and I used six of the eight colors that come in this set, omitting Burnt Umber and Payne's Gray, understandably, because they're not exactly holiday colors. Because these paints are fine artist quality, the colors are creamy and dense, and Sennelier uses honey in its formula, so the paint is actually very soft, but I didn't find it to be sticky when it dried, but I don't reside in a super humid clime, so that's something to think about um, depending on where you live. I'm starting with the Yummy Peppermint Swirl Ornament, and since this is Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper, albeit the back side, it has some texture, so the lines are a little rough and variegated, but they turn out okay. I've put X's in the fill areas to clarify them for later. As soon as I fill in those areas with that beautiful bright red, the peppermint pops out at you. A diluted wash in a circular pattern of pink will give some illusion of shine to the white areas and then a white gel pen or gouache adds white highlights to the red areas for a finishing touch. And now it looks just delicious. The candy cane ornament on the far right echoes the colors and swirly patterns in a satisfying bookend composition. I'm going to paint it in with the same red, full strength first, and then dilute it to pink and adding white highlights last. When you're choosing your own ornaments for a piece like this, conjure up what your favorite holiday memories are to inspire you. The third ornament I'll paint is further away than the first two, and you want to make your ornaments vary in size, shape, color and in hanging height to optimize the visual appeal of your painting. So this one is small and blue violet with curly cues and I've decided on a general lighting from the right top side so that's where my highlight's going to be. The fourth ornament is a happy Christmassy green to complement the red candy cane and it's also plain. The two ornaments near it are patterned and I didn't want everything to get too busy. The plain green is a nice big area of rest for the eye. The bright green also reminds me of Dr. Seuss books, probably because the Grinch was green and also the green eggs that were loved by Sam I Am. Another orange and yellow ornament cap and then we move on. The next ornament is a luscious blue with an opulent ribbon on top that I think will be another rich red. I used both of the blues in my set, first the cinerous blue and then the French ultramarine in stripes. I'm painting wet on dry and lifting a highlight along the center belly area of the ornament to imply glass. When doing the ribbon, I actually had a bleed of red into the blue area twice, but I mopped it up and then let the area dry out completely, and later I came back with the blue to patch it in, and it's not noticeable at all. And watercolor is a lot more forgiving than its reputation will have you believe, and as I discussed in my 77 Techniques video, lifting can be done in various ways for dry or wet paint. I've done really simple, clean areas of shadows and highlights to keep this bow bright and simple. It's a cheery, technicolor, Judy Garland and Oz color scheme here. The 
the second half of the ribbon pops in. It was done the same way as the first half, and I also did two other smaller ornaments off camera. These were done similarly to the previous green and blue violet ones, and I just added white specks to suggest sparkles on the red violet one, and a gold tassel to make it more different. The tassel and ornament chains I drew in with a gold gel pen because it was faster than getting out my gold paint. Now it's time to do the star in, in sunny yellow and orange to give some warmth to the center. After an all over light glaze of the yellow, I add some orange mixed from the red vermilion color and the yellow to half of the sections. Blending away edges gives a look of a reflective gold ornament with depth. Since I have the gold and white gel pens out, adding gold and white dots to heighten the sparkle and then using the white pen on the peaks of the star's arms is a nice final pop of reflected light. And now we have a sparkly star all done. On to the stocking. I had to do some holly berries at the top and then sneak in some blue color on the white cuff area of the stocking. The rest I'll keep to an Xmasy red green color scheme. The red vermilion color really is the hue with the most heft in this painting and you can see how much weight and attention it brings to the toe and midfoot of the stocking. I dab out some light snowflakes for a final touch and then it's all done. This was such a magical and nostalgic piece to paint. I really hope you had fun too. If you like this painting, you can visit my Redbubble shop page to get an art print or a shirt or a bag or some other awesome thing with these festive and decorative ornaments printed on them. As always, thanks for parking your brushes here. Please subscribe and check out the links below or on my website. And until next time, sparkly art adventures and Merry Christmas.